13 years ago, Boston thought it would take a Superman to keep their pops going. Little did they know, that's exactly who they were going to get. John Towner Williams and his baton would lift the town off its feet. By the time he joined the school band, John was accomplished on four instruments. Trained in the classics at Juilliard, he composed his first sonata at 19, and even tried his hand at conducting. But there was another sound that got him going. His band nicknamed him Curly. When his fingers hit those keys, he was swinging. In New York clubs, on albums, and in 1959, in a TV series. Get a look at the bashful one on the bench, right after John Cassavetes stands up. John could do more with music than tap out a tune. He could imagine all of its possibilities and arrange it so that you could, too. Word got around, and soon John was writing arrangements for bands and for singers like Vic Damone and Mahalia Jackson. His family was in Los Angeles, and so were the big studio orchestras where he got work as a pianist. But like his good friend Andre Previn, it was writing, not playing, where he lost himself in the music. He traveled on notes like an explorer, and with just a few of them, raced the heartbeat into a countdown. No one had as much fun with us as John. Bottom of that side. Oh, there. Composing scores for two and three movies a year, he moved from landscape to landscape, from the intimate to the epic, painting the shades of emotions with the sounds of the symphony. You know what happens? It reaches out and bites. And bites, but probably here. Maybe I'll catch there. both. Out and bite. I don't know how you can. secrets about us he understood, he unlocked with his music. Midas touch, and his musical signature was written large across some of Hollywood's finest and biggest hits. And then, the most unflamboyant musician in Los Angeles was asked to succeed the most flamboyant musician in Boston. Arthur Fiedler had led the Pops for 50 years, shaped its image, and turned himself into a piece of Boston folklore. Wow. Well, I better run for mayor. <laughs> taking on the Pops was like taking on history, taking on Boston, taking on the American Revolution. And John had only 11 weeks a year to do it. There were musicians to win over, old scores to learn, and a new way to serve up music. The tension and the town elders were intense. Would this experiment work at all? 
ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, everyone. This is our new pops. <laughs> How could it not? John is a helpless lover of the symphony orchestra and popular music, and this is the best place on earth for both of them. Together they recorded 27 albums, traveled on seven tours, appeared in 77 television shows, broke the house record at Ravinia, and brought John's popular film scores into the repertoire of popular music. It was a musical match that made a musical family unlike any other. Like music, linger in mind. So when John leaves the Pops, a piece of Boston will go with him. But that piece of him that came alive here, that will always stay behind. Yeah. 